So I'm here with Professor Daniel Wolpert of the Engineering Department at Cambridge University. Daniel is going to give the Telluric Lecture at the OHBM meeting in Geneva. So I want to talk to him and hear a little bit about his research, about his lecture and his view of our field. Um, so what's your lecture at OHBM in Geneva going to be about? Well, I still feel motor control is regarded as the poor man of neuroscience. So, you know, most people work on cognition or vision, and they're a bit snooty about their ability to understand things compared to us humble people who look at muscles and joints and things. So the first thing I want to convince people is actually there are interesting questions of motor control. And I want to convince people that actually the only point to understand cognition and sensation and perception is to guide action. And so forgetting the action part, you're forgetting why we're doing all this processing. So that's the first thing. But then I want to go through the different levels we've been working on to try and really explain the interesting new developments. Both at low-level central motor noise, I'll work on issues with normative models and Bayesian processing. We've done a lot of work at the learning level, how people learn structures of tasks or parameters at the motor learning level. And finally, I really want to cover our more recent work trying to link decision-making and motor control together, how motor control affects decisions and decisions affect motor control. So I'll try and give everyone a little bit of understanding of the algorithms we think the brain uses. Now, I have to admit, we don't do imaging in my group, but I like to inspire imagers to take up our ideas, <laughs> ideally, and go and test them using their techniques. Um, sadly, I sort of missed, missed the, uh, the, you know, the huge wave of um, uh, excitement that's happened in the imaging field, um, which has been tremendous, but now it's, to me, such a huge field, it's hard for me to get into. So my aim is to inspire both the huge sorts of people, but also the physiologists, to try and tackle some of these hard problems. But for things like both vision and motor control, it's actually a hard engineering problem. That's and right. Not, yes. So we have some normative framework to come at it, but we don't actually have a solution that can compete with human performance. So how does the normative yep. thing work out in that context? Right. So I would actually flip it the other way around. I would say the normative models at the moment are better models of low-level sensory motor processing. At the moment, a, a big debate is whether normative models are good at the way humans reason, because we are very poor at high-level reasoning, but maybe we'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. So at the low level, it's true that the normative models tell you how you should do perception, might tell you how to do action, but the problems are they're intractable in principle. I mean, so although you can say you should do the Bayesian thing, actually doing the Bayesian thing is intractable for computers and probably intractable for the brain. So I think all the smart mind at the moment is asking what are the clever approximations the brain can take to solve these sorts of problems. And so the group which I'm head of is half machine learning and half uh, motor control, uh, half neuroscience. And so the machine learners all their effort is not saying it's just Bayesian, but asking how can we do these complex computations in efficient, in efficient ways. And I think they've been very successful. I think that AlphaGo has been very successful, image processing is getting very successful. And so one of the frustrations in that field is the things which are successful are somewhat hacky. So deep belief nets work brilliantly, but they're not as elegant in our terms of the Bayesian processing. And the hope is at the end that the normative models will win out over these rather arbitrary neural network type mechanisms. But I think one of the problems of motor control is we don't really know what the brain has to solve to be dexterous. When it comes to a visual task, you know, I want to be able to categorize faces, let's say. But when it comes to being dexterous, it's not even clear what the measure of dexterity is. Mm -hmm. So we have a, both a problem in posing the problem, and once we pose a problem, both the problem in approximating the solutions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tend to focus on the computation and the algorithm. You know, what does the brain have to solve? What algorithm does it use? But clearly, in the end, we want to be able to understand where the algorithm is instantiated. And more than that, I think brain imaging can help differentiate between algorithms. Um, so I think this model-based approach, which has become very popular, I think is incredibly impressive. And I guess if had that been around 20 years ago when I started out, maybe I'd have got involved in imaging, because I'm, I'm so impressed by you know, the modeling and the correlations. That seems a very beautiful way to go. So I think what I would like to be able to do is provide understanding of the algorithms of brain users, and then hope that imagers can take that information and work out where and how that's instantiated. Mm -hmm. And I think not only imaging, but also neurophysiology is incredibly important with all the new techniques which have been developed.